Hello, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Sarah and I'd like to welcome you to our Advent Women Together event. Um, at this time of Advent, as we prepare for Christmas in what's been an extraordinary year, we felt it would be important to reflect on a key woman um, in the Christmas story, that of Mary. So I'm really looking forward to welcoming Catherine, Becky and Antonia, who are going to share some of their own personal reflections around the story of Mary. Afterwards, we'll have a chance to reflect on what we've heard in groups. So please do stay on and join us in that. So firstly, I just want to welcome and hand over to Catherine to share her reflections. Hello, thank you, Sarah. So I'm looking a little bit more closely at who Mary was um, as a person and what her calling meant for her. So she was a normal teenage Jewish girl of probably aged about 12 to 13. She, lived, she came from a poor family and lived in Nazareth in Israel. She was recently engaged to Joseph. She had no special qualifications for what God was asking her to do other than she was descended from David. She had a normal religious upbringing for that time. And it's interesting to note that she was aware of the prophecies from the, Old, from the Old Testament about the coming of the Messiah, the savior of people. Um, and also that she did have a number of other children um, just showing how special Jesus, Jesus was. So why was she chosen? God's gifts for her were obedience and trust, despite the huge cost for her. She nearly lost her fiance and probably lost uh, much respect in the community as an unmarried mother. I've taken a, a, a bit more of an interest in this as having worked for a, a midwife for many years and cared for many really young teenage mothers. I feel I have some insight into you know, what this, this might have meant for her in the community, uh, even with uh, uh, you know, today's society as well. And of course, her beloved son was rejected and brutally murdered. Her response to this was humble belief, and we'll hear a little bit more about that from Becky. So what does, this all, what does all of this mean for us? Although the angel Gabriel came to Mary as specially chosen by God, it's really important to remember that we are all special in God's eyes, um, as opposed to how other people or even we see ourselves. And this isn't on our own merit, but by God's grace and his individual plan for us, for our lives. We've all been given amazing gifts by which to serve him and other people. It could be that um, you're a good listener, um, a good encourager of people, good at offering practical help, and even just really enjoy singing worship songs. It wouldn't be uncommon for all of us to feel, are we worthy of this? Why me? What are the gifts that, that I've been given by God? It's really um, a really great thing to do to uh, remember that the Holy Spirit is with us, but we do have to ask the Holy Spirit to show us and to help us every day. It's important to keep in our hearts that no matter how hard and difficult life is, and I think we've all had a difficult year this year, that God knows that whatever he's asking us to do, that he knows that we can do what he's asking us. And it might be worth remembering Luke 1 verse 38, May your word be fulfilled. Are we really ready and um, able to, 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 you know, to fully say this? In my own life, I found it easier to look back over my life and see how God has been working, which he truly has been working in my life. Um, but trust, I feel, is more about looking forward and saying thank you to God for all what I call the L's, which are loving us, listening to us, leading us, and lighting our, our own paths. So I'll hand over now to Becky. Thank you, Catherine. As I was looking into Luke and uh, thinking about Mary in particular, I think what struck me most was um, her song, her Magnificat, her worship, her response to being told the news that she was going to be the, the mother of the Messiah. Um, initially, when she was uh, confronted with the angel Gabriel, of course, it was terrifying. Um, we read that in various um, parts of scripture that anyone who is confronted by an angel, it, it, they, are, they are frightened, they are terrified. And this obviously was 
um, something for an unmarried teenager, um, something overwhelming. But it's interesting that by the time she arrived at Elizabeth's home, um, she was in a place where she was ready to worship. And, um, and this is what we read in Luke chapter one, verse 46 to 55. What, what she says, she begins by saying, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. I, I just sense that her worship here comes from her innermost being and her soul and her worship, her spirit are, are moved. Um, the Holy Spirit is, is, is upon her and she's being transformed by it. And I think the result is a deep appreciation and joy for God and for his glory. I also note that she goes, she goes on to say, um, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And I think here we see that she understands that she is the passive recipient of God's grace. She has done nothing to deserve um, this blessing, just as we don't. Um, we don't deserve God's grace. But when we realize that God has blessed us with, with his mercy and his grace and his salvation, we are moved to worship just as she is here. Um, I also find it interesting to note that Mary speaks of generations after her who will call her blessed and generations before her to whom God has shown strength. I think she's she's going beyond her own personal blessing here. She's seeing the bigger picture of God's plan for redemption. And she understands that generations before and generations after are the object of divine redemption. And we are a part of that plan. And I think this is another aspect of worship, that when we worship in spirit and in truth, we are taken beyond ourselves. We are we we can be blessed with a glimpse of God's perspective. Our eyes are taken off of ourselves and I think we're released through this and, and we, we can be blessed with an appreciation for God's glorious plan for, for his world. I think worship in spirit and in truth does transformative and, in, and in incredible things. Um, and lastly, what I also just took from Mary's worship here is her understanding of humility. When we are humble, God uses us. She says, his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. And when we worship him in humility, I I feel that we are in the right place and God is in the right place and we are open therefore to being used by God. So in conclusion, I, I, I think this song of Mary really speaks of four things for me, that when we are, um, that we are called to worship, sorry, in spite of our circumstances because God is always good. Um, secondly, I think when we worship, in spirit and in truth, we are blessed with a joy that goes beyond our circumstances. Thirdly, when we worship, we are taken beyond ourselves and blessed with a deeper understanding of God's will for us and redemptive plan for his creation. And lastly, when we worship, we're reminded of our place of humility before God. God doesn't use the proud, but uses the powerless in order to magnify his own power. Over to you, Antonio. Oh, thanks so much, Becky. And um, thank you, Catherine. Um, so um, my take on Mary, it will overlap a little bit with what Becky and Catherine have both said. But um, one of the things that most draws me into um, the story of Mary is this verse. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
So obviously that's referring to the miraculous way that Mary conceived and that the Son of God became a tiny bundle of cells growing in her. And um, of course, we've probably all marveled at what a mystery it is that an almighty creator God would make himself this vulnerable. But what struck me this time is that it's also a sort of picture of the extent of God's closeness to humanity. So maybe you don't have to have had a baby to imagine that there's no experience much closer more intimate, more physical, more personal. And that God should choose to come so close is a picture to me of the tenderness and the intimacy of his love for us. But if Mary's experience was miraculous and mysterious and humbling, how much more so is our own experience when God comes to live in our hearts by his Holy Spirit. We too can come under the shadow of the Most High as he takes up his dwelling in our lives. It's just as intimate, just as personal, real, physical and close. And isn't it humbling and amazing that the God who made everything who's uncontainable, who reigns on an eternal throne, should choose of all places to live in my heart. And what's even better is that in my heart, he isn't a tiny, helpless baby in me, but a power. And I was just thinking a little bit about that power, what that means. It's a power that enables me when I don't think I can anymore. It's a power that lifts me up on eagle's wings. It's also a power that convicts me, that heals, that transforms me <clears throat> from the inside. It's a power that guides me and a power that just brings God's words to life <clears throat> when I need it most, bringing me comfort or peace or that perfect reminder. And it's a power that creates opportunities to talk to people. So um, I guess my challenge has been, have I fully taken on board that God dwells in me? Do I live in touch with that reality? Do I make room for his miracles, the big ones, but the small ones, the everyday ones? Do I turn to him in the moment, knowing that he's already here in me? Or as is probably too often the case with me, am I too busy trying to plan, trying to manage, trying to control, or too busy rushing around to stop and to notice and to listen? So I suppose to bring it together, it links in a bit with what Becky was saying about worship. Am I excited enough by this reality so that I will sing with Mary? My soul glorifies the Lord, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant.